Hey besties, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. Today will be a part 2 of reacting to your honest thoughts slash confessions on K-pop groups. In part 1 which I will put somewhere in the screen, I did 5 groups so go watch those. Here I will also do 5 groups of the responses from the previous form. This video will also include only 5 groups. Once again you are allowed to express your opinions in the comments but don't be ruthless. Without further ado let us all begin. The first group I'll start off with is Ice One. Also if you haven't watched the first part, I only choose 3 responses for each group. So let's start off with the first response. I feel like their songs are getting progressively louder. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess it's just their sound. Now to whoever wrote this, I genuinely get where you are coming from and I feel the same way. Like they said it is not a bad thing, but just something I've noticed as well. I'm just like how did they go from something like Violetta to Fiesta? They have an extremely energetic concept which makes it a signature style of theirs. I don't know if you guys get what louder means but I can't explain it. It literally just gets louder. Their most recent comeback was extremely hype as well. But I'm not complaining I still enjoy it. On to answer number 2. They need to disband. Making their contract permanent defeats the whole purpose of their creation. I love the girls, but they knew what they were getting into as well as their fans. I agree, they did know what they were getting into but that doesn't make it easier. In fact harder after how much they have grown, but it would be unfair in my opinion. I oh I was extremely successful but had to come to an end after the contract ended. I highly doubt that they will all form together, and if they do some members won't continue promoting for sure. It's still a sensitive topic to talk about for some people but it's going to happen at the end of the day. And if I'm being honest I think certain members have to get out of that group now. This is a major reason as to why I don't like these survival shows. If I get too attached to a group and they disband after two years, I would literally break down. Ice One is extremely talented and if they were meant to be a permanent group, I can assure you they would have reached higher points in their career. On to the third and last confession for Ice One. Promise 9 is way better in my opinion, and their label should put resources and time into them. Ice One is just overshadowing Promise 9 and it's a fucking shame. Keyword here is in my opinion, I have listened to majority of Promise 9's releases and they deserve a bigger audience for sure. Right now I feel like their company is trying to focus on Ice One before they disband, and trying to put out as much from them. I don't really know what's going on with Promise 9, they should definitely have more from their company and I hope their times come soon. The next group is Mama Moo. Let's start with the first thought. They definitely can strive higher if they stop on solo music for a while and focus all the way for the group. Every member is well known but we must say Hwasa kinda overshadows the others last year. Vocal Queens. I agree. If you guys want me to be honest the only solo that I liked was Solar's Spit It Out. It was something really different I've never seen and even though a lot of people disliked it, I loved it. I don't think the solos distracted them that much, but it definitely would have made them release better songs in my opinion. I definitely think Hwasa overshadows the group but it's the fans fault. I no longer stand Mama Moo but I only like a few of their recent songs, other than that yes they are vocal legends. On to the next answer, Aya wasn't that bad but I just can't vibe with them or their music. Back to what I was saying about people disliking Aya, I personally loved it but I don't stand. I don't know why but I love songs that have an empty chorus if you get what I mean. I also have seen many people talking about how they can't get into Mama Moo's music. From a non-fan view I can see because there are some songs that I don't vibe with. And they do have a really diverse discography, especially when it comes to title tracks. I think sometimes they try to be a little too adventurous with their music, and sometimes don't really hit the mark, but I totally understand. Now for the last answer. I know other moves are sick of hearing people say this but I just can't personally support Mama Moo anymore. I have given them so many chances and I feel like they never learn from their mistakes. I wish the best for them but I can't support them anymore. I have never agreed with anything more. I know a lot of people may say that we need to educate them instead of hating. But it's literally 2021 if you don't know your wrongs and your rights. Go on the internet and learn about it yourself. Wasa is the main problem for me and also for a lot of other people. She is 25 years old and is old enough to educate herself. I literally don't have the time to educate these people 3 to 5 business days. And it's the same problem for so many other groups. It's really not that hard to just not use cultures as aesthetics, or say things that may hurt a certain group of people. You call it petty I call it respect. Just hold them accountable. I could confidently say that if they weren't problematic, I would stand so hard. 
They are one of the most talented groups and individuals I have ever seen, and their music and stage presence is no joke, but I just can't. The third group is TXT. Let's start off with the first response. They are the male version of Red Velvet for me, not comparing them or anything. I just think about their future and it is so similar to Red Velvet's, like they aren't the most popular four-generation male group but they also are very famous, both international and in Korea. They also have an amazing, beautiful, literally art music. I just wish they didn't use much auto-tune because they have such a beautiful voices, is such a waste of talent. I didn't want to be the one to say it but thank God to whoever said it for me. I find them so similar to Red Velvet. There's five members. They both have one of the most versatile discographies in K-pop. Everyone can be a vocal in both groups and so many more. About their career being similar I do agree with their popularity similarities. They aren't the most popular but they definitely have the hype. I just don't want for TXT's future to end up like Red Velvet's with how it's looking now. The autotune is optional but I also agree they don't need it. I don't really know many songs where they use it if I'm being honest. But their voices are really versatile so I do wish they tone it down. Other than that yes I agree. Now for the second response. I started off just despising Crown. Now I'm kinda cool with it. And I hate the rest of their discography. Especially Blue Hour cause it's just Dynamite 2.0. Except for Ghosting and Way Back Home. Those two songs can end me. Frankly. I still don't really care for all of them except Huninkai. His expressions are hella funny. Now I don't know how to really respond to this. I mean if you don't like their discography except for like two songs that's fine. But to me Blue Hour and Dynamite are nowhere on the same level of similarity. Yes they were both retro but the songs were in their own lanes. If you aren't a fan of the members or don't care for them. Ah cool I guess. I don't get why people say this but if you feel the need to say it okay then. On to the last answer from them. Their music has this really dreamy quality. And I just love their overall vibe. And I'm glad that bit I didn't just make BTS the sequel, but instead gave us a group that is so unique and wonderful. 10 out of 10 every song is a bop. A dreamy concept is the perfect way to describe them. Just look at Blue Hour and Nap of a Star for an example. They have a totally different style from BTS which made me so happy. I still don't get how some of you all can compare their music styles to each other. They are definitely one of the most unique not just with their music, but style in general. Big hit did them good and they better continue doing so in the future. On to the second to last group which is G-Idol. Let's look at the first response. The G-Idol members to me don't really stand out for their respective roles. Aside from probably Soi and for her rapping. I don't see a lot of Sujin's dancing appreciation. Or Mai and singing appreciation and aside from Soi and the only person who I hear about is Minnie for her tongue. Although I'm vehemently against it. I sometimes think. Were they really ready to debut? I agree with the fact that the member that stands out to the public the most is Soyeon, and the company does not do the other members' positions justice, however I do think they were ready to debut, just a very shitty company in line distributions. Nowadays I do see more of Sujin's dancing appreciation, and her doing dance covers which is really good for her, the other members are in the shadows though. On to the second answer, great songs, I think Shuhua is just a visual. Her facial expression is not good and she doesn't do great in neither dance nor vocals. It's my opinion. Now I don't keep up with the group's music except for title tracks. So I don't know if she has had songs to showcase her abilities. But these title tracks are just so sad. She is not the best dancer or performer to me. But I don't think she is just a visual at all. They just don't know how to work with her voice. She doesn't stand out to me as much as the other members but she is memorable. She just deserves way better for her abilities. On to the last response. Don't know how I feel about G-Idol. Completely mixed emotions. I only like half of the members and all the cultural appropriation that's happening without apologies is just, yikes. Cube really is SM in the making. Whoever this is let's be best friends. Because I understand you so much. Again back to other groups cultural appropriating. G-Idol is one of those groups. Their music slaps and I would stand if they didn't make some of the decisions they've made. The only member I genuinely like is Sujin. Cube itself is burning down as we speak if we are being honest. It will always will be a mess. I genuinely think G-Idol could be one of the biggest girl groups if they didn't have certain incidents happen. But yet again they did what they did and it's already done. The last group for this part will be Luna. Here is the first confession. I really dislike so what and why not. I just don't think the group suits it and that they should drift more towards concepts like Butterfly, and use their number of members as an advantage. 
like how Seventeen do in their choreographies. Now I literally loved Why Not. It is one of my top songs from them. So what was okay but I just only love the bridge and rap. Butterfly is my favorite girl group track ever so I definitely want a part 2 of that type of concept. Their choreographies right now are still super complex. I mean look at So What and Why Not. But Butterfly's choreo is unmatched till this day in my head. I mean it was so beautiful and no one has done something like that till this day. They should definitely do more group and duo parts in their choreography. But I have no problem with it where it is right now. On to answer number 2. I don't think that Luna will ever achieve domestic success. Their appeal mostly targets international markets. And their marketing music and general style isn't one that K-Nets tend to gravitate towards. I actually saw many answers like this. Let's get one thing straight though. Luna is not underrated. They are definitely successful, and to me they can definitely succeed more and become a big girl group, as big as Blackpink twice or Red Velvet. No because let's be honest people won't give them the chance. They are one of those groups that have a much stronger international audience. They are genuinely missing out though. Now for the last answer of the day. I feel like as much as I want to, I can't get into Luna. I love their title tracks but not their B-sides. The solo subunits and Lunaverse is too confusing for me. I'm already struggling to get their names right so everything else is just so much more confusing. Otherwise I'm literally in love with Chu. I have been listening to Luna since 2019, and I'm still a new full stan and I don't even get their entire story yet. If that's what's keeping you from standing, I get it, because you don't really know what's going on. I love their b-sides but if you don't I respect it. There's a lot into their discography and it can be overwhelming so you do you. That is it for part 2. Like I said in last part there are still many groups and hundreds of responses. So if you guys want me to make this into a 4 or 5 part series let me know. They are really fun to make anyways. And these are real spicy. Make sure to like and subscribe. And go follow my Instagram if you haven't. Everything will be in the description. I hope to see you all next video. Stay safe besties.